Alright guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go to this great email I sent from a subscriber. That's from a guy, he is 34 years old. He's been watching the channel for like uh, about a year. And he writes in about a date he went on a couple weekends ago where he ultimately ended up leaving the girl, uh, ending the date abruptly after she had crossed the line and showed him too much disrespect. Disrespect and clearly was using him. And let me tell you, she was floored, even crying in the restaurant when he did what he did. Handled it like a boss. And here's the interesting thing. Ever since then, she won't leave him alone. She has been bombarding him with texts and phone calls trying to get together with him. In other words, by him not putting up with her crap and standing up for himself and acting like a man with some self-respect, she's now into him. And she won't leave him alone. And he's wondering, shit. Should I hook up with this girl? Take advantage of the situation. But before I go to go over here, guys, reminding you how you gotta stand up for yourself. How if anybody, including women, are showing you disrespect, you need to be prepared to walk. Even in the middle of a freaking date. Walk right out the door. It's amazing, that power. Because nobody's gonna respect you if you just take being used and having your boundaries crossed and all that. There are just too many nice guys out there that do that and they get treated like nice guys do. And you're going to see exactly here. And this guy will admit that he was he was that guy in the past. Who was the nice guy, did the things they showed in the movies. And now he's starting to handle things differently and it's had amazing results. So he uh, starts off, he says, oh, hello, SSM. I want to share my story with you because I'm currently going through something and I'm a bit conflicted. I started watching your channel about 12 months ago and it opened my eyes to everything I had ever gone through in previous failed relationships. I'm 34 years old, I'm single, never married, and have no kids. I make great money in finance. I own a two-story home in a cul-de-sac in a nice neighborhood. Great, bro. Good for you. Uh, I guess you would consider me an alpha or maybe a sigma, but I'm definitely not a beta. I played sports in high school and dated cheerleaders, and in college I learned music and now I play guitar, bass, piano, and sing in a pretty successful rock band that plays on the weekends. So obviously like a local rock band. I was in a frat and had success, had access to hundreds of sorority girls in my four-year college career. I'm surprised you—you know what didn't fall off after those four years with hundreds of college or sorority girls. Needless to say, none of them worked out. Girls were never loyal, and I too often let them walk all over me. And why? Because society has programmed me into believing that I had to be the nice guy. Hollywood movies had me believing that girls would get rid of me and go for the nice beta in the end because he would treat her better or something stupid. So it sounds like because obviously you played sports and you were in a frat, you had status, you probably looked good, so they were initially attracted to you because of your status and your looks and all that. But after probably a hookup or two or a date or two, they quickly realized you weren't what they thought you were and that's where they all ended badly. That, that's what I'm getting from this. So at least you probably got laid a lot of times but until they realized you know, that you're made of jello. So despite every fiber of my being an instinct, when a woman disrespected me, I bit my tongue and took the nicer approach. Smack! Well, you learned, didn't you? It never worked. And after discovering your channel all these years later, looking back, it makes total sense. And I was interested in how I would have reacted differently had I been armed with the knowledge back then. But more importantly, how I would react in a relationship today having that knowledge. Well, I got my chance two weekends ago. I met a girl recently, we will call her Kay. She's 23 years old, single, and has no kids. Well, I hope she has no kids by 23, but let's be honest, a lot of gals out there do have a kid by 23. She's very beautiful, even without makeup. She's very different from the girls I dated in the past. She's a tomboy in that she plays soccer and likes sports. And she's 11 years younger than me. Hey, go for it. Some young ass. She was not in a sorority, was not a cheerleader, or on the dance team, and not near my age, which always been the type of girl I had gone for. But they were all—they were always S L U T S, and I had hopes that this girl might be pure and less of a problem. Pure, just because she plays soccer. Newsflash: I've known some soccer girls, and believe me, they were not pure. Uh, we know each other for uh, for six months. She broke up with her boyfriend three months ago. <clears throat> he broke it off with her. Uh-oh. 
If she broke it off with him, okay. But he broke it off with her. We all know how it goes with the ladies, or they, if you call them ladies, they don't all qualify as ladies. When they're dumped, they're either, you know, hell bent and getting revenge, or they they can't get over it, and they're obsessed because he broke up with her first. Over the last three months, we started to become flirty and develop a respect for each other. I could tell she looked up to me. One day, she and her friend asked me why I was single, because I'm a catch, they said. <laughs> I would respond to something like, well, given the current dating marketplace and how you all are, there's a reason I'm fucking single. I asked them in return, what is it in, what's in it for me? They were flabbergasted, like they had never heard that question before. They both answered marriage, love, and kids. <laughs> yeah, what's in it for me? That sounds like a punishment. And I told them I could be in love without marriage and have kids without marriage. They had zero response. I stayed friendly and the conversation ended there. But I knew it meant that Kay was talking about me to the other girls and it confirmed my feeling that she was attracted to me. I would say she was attracted enough to you at this point. But remember... She was dumped by the other boyfriend, and her ego pro clearly, as you're going to see how the story goes, couldn't handle it. As our floating grew stronger, our feelings for each other have grown stronger. Let's not get carried away, dude. We both have crushes on each other, and it's been tension has built up. I didn't know if that was a good or bad thing. But I asked her out a couple of Wednesdays ago, and we went out on a Friday night to a nice Italian dinner. Smack! If you watch me 12 months, you know damn well I tell you to go out for a drink. I get that you're already acquainted and all that, but that's, that's different. Once You're going to a new arena when it's officially date time as opposed to wherever you see her regularly. I don't know where you see her, at the gym or, or I don't know where. One drink. Uh, my band was off this weekend, so it was perfect. Since we already had drinks with each other a couple times. Ah, okay, my bad. You already had drinks. You're taken to the new level. And I got to know each other over the months. I felt a dinner was more appropriate than something more casual. Uh, she lives with her mom, and when I went to pick her up, she came out looking gorgeous. She was wearing makeup and was done in a very feminine and girly way that I hadn't seen of her. I liked it. Okay. When a girl prepares herself for the date looking really good, that means she actually cares about her appearance and looking good for you. It's not like she sh you said she's a tomboy. It's not like she showed up in a pair of jeans with big holes in her knees and you know what I mean? Uh, so we're at the restaurant talking and ordering. And she mentioned how nice it was to be able to go to dinner like this. She said that she never had a boyfriend that could afford to. Uh-huh. Interesting. Now, okay, she's 23 years old, 23 years old, but then again, 23-year-old girls or gals in their early 20s could easily date guys 30 years old or something. So it tells me something about the type of guy she goes for. When she apologized for how that sounded, I told her she should feel that way. If my success and money is something that attracts her, then good. I understand that. If she's attracted to me for my hair, well, that could go away at some point. The money won't if I play it smart. But oddly, during these conversations and ordering food, she kept getting calls and messages on her phone. Red flag. Not cool. If you're on a date, she can put her phone in her purse, put it on mute, and you have your conversations and all. I'm sure you weren't picking up your phone every time you got a notification from a text or a, the Facebook like or Instagram like or whatever. She can do the same thing. And you can't tolerate that shit, guys. I asked her if it's something important she needs to take, which was my way of letting her know it was rude of her. She said it was her ex-boyfriend. Aha. Uh -huh. The same ex-boyfriend that dumped her. Why is he calling her? I asked her if they still talk because I wasn't aware of that. She said she told him that we were going out on Friday night. So they do talk, and she's letting him know that you guys are going out. Sound? I kid you not. Here comes the sirens. Cannot, honest to God. As quiet as can be. Now I, I, I turn the video on. Here we go. Okay, anyway. Interesting that she, they're talking still, which tells me that obviously he broke up with her. She's probably chasing after him. And I had to let him know that uh, he has some competition. Mm-hmm. At that moment, I had a sinking feeling. She was only rebounding with me. Using me. Remember, he broke up with her. what I tell you? This is why you gotta be careful being the rebound guy and all that, and her using you to try and make him jealous. 
She wanted her ex-boyfriend to know that other men found her attractive. What else would she tell him that, that we, why else would she tell him they were going on a date? Apparently, it worked for her because he was going crazy thinking about her with another man. Manipulation, manipulation, manipulation. The oldest trick in the book. Well, now that you know this, doesn't mean you have to continue on your date. And probably, especially me, because we met a time or two before. He knows of me at the very least. After he continually called and called and called, I told her she should probably take the call. So she got up away from the table and went off somewhere private to have a call. So you're there having dinner and other people are around you enjoying their dinner and they keep hearing this girl's fucking phone go off? I would have walked. But don't worry. I was hoping it would be one minute. Anything more and it would be more of a red flag than it already was. No, this is already red flag. This is already grounds to walk. Well, one minute turned into ten minutes. She left your table for 10 minutes. What does this say about her perception of you? That you're the nice guy that she can sit there and have dinner with and keep letting her phone go off and off and interrupt you to take the phone calls and walk away for 10 minutes. She sees she's a typical nice guy that'll put up with her bullshit. And where did that get you in the past when you behave like the nice guy they show you in the movies? And when our food got delivered, I immediately asked where to wrap up the food to go and bring me the bill. Soon after, they brought the bill and I had handed them a card to run and they walked off. She still isn't back yet? Uh, that is when Kay came back and sat down. It had been approximately 10 to 15 minutes that she was talking to her ex-boyfriend. This is all on purpose to use you. I asked her how it went with him. She said he was having a hard time. Then she put her hand on my leg and rubbed it and said she was tired of being with bad boys and liked that I was with uh, I was a nice guy. Yeah, sure. Uh-huh. We've all heard that song and dance before. So, unfortunately, her perception of you is a nice guy. Nobody wants that. You know, but, well, she's about to learn you ain't so nice. I told her she was all wrong about me. And then I said maybe the date was a mistake. The look of horror and shock on her face was evident. She started trying to backtrack, and I stopped her and told her not to worry, and she shouldn't feel bad. I didn't care. <laughs> she liked hearing that. She must have thought it meant that I was okay with everything that just happened. Little did she know. It was all perfect timing, because at that moment, the waiter came back with the uh, styrofoam to-go boxes and the bill for me to sign with my card in it. She was in shock. She had no idea I'd asked for the bill and the to-go boxes. I signed the bill and tipped the waiter huge. I intentionally wanted her to see how much i just spent, as well as how generous I was with the waiter. Tip the waiter because he's a good guy and helping you out, not because you got to show off to her. You don't owe her anything, but I, I get your point, your reasoning, but still. She then asked if we could go to my house and talk, and I said no. I was taking her home. She was saying, no, 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 that she was so sorry that she made a mistake telling her ex-boyfriend and that she's really, really liked me and wanted to hang out. Yeah, sure. Nope. Now, why are you going to take her home? I would have taken her home. I left her ass there. And by the way, I would have taken her food with me because you paid for it after all. She can Uber or Lyft or get a cab or call up the same boyfriend and come pick her ass up. I told her no, that I would not have ever asked her out had I known that she was still hung up on her ex-boyfriend. She tried to argue that she wasn't and that she didn't know why she was doing what she was doing by telling him and taking the phone call in the restaurant. Bullshit. She knows exactly what she was doing. That's why she told him she was going out with you. And uh, probably told him when the date was going on. And all. She probably texted him, I'm on the date now. That's probably why he was calling. I just told her I love my solitude and freedom and I have women and I do have women chasing me. I don't like dysfunctional relationships and wasn't about to engage in one. Good for you. She bawled the rest of the way home and said out loud, I can't believe you're just driving me home. I'd be like, bitch, you're lucky I'm driving your ass home. I wouldn't have driven her home, dude. I would have had her left her there. And I would have taken her goddamn food, I might add. When we parked, I got out of the car to walk her to the door. She said I didn't have to, but I said your crazy boyfriend that won't leave, leave this alone is a danger to you at this moment. I intentionally said boyfriend instead of ex-boyfriend. Not sure she knows that or not. 
I guarantee you she did. So I walked through the door and said goodbye. She, she said sorry again, and that was that. Okay, maybe you did keep her food. I left feeling great because I'd taken charge of the entire situation and wouldn't budge my standards. Good for you, bro. I wouldn't have driven her home, but other than that, very good job. Now, next time you find out a girl that likes you was recently dumped by her boyfriend, I would avoid that for a while. I also learned it doesn't matter. If they're cheerleaders or tomboys, women are all the same, aren't they? Yes. That's the point I've been trying to make forever. Now, that date was on a Friday night. She called Saturday morning, and I did not answer. She tried texting me how I was doing, and I replied, good, thanks. The next day, she called a few times, and I didn't answer. She started, Then she started texting, begging to talk to me. How interesting. It was then that I decided that I need to stop acting like a jilted lover. Well, I went on half a date. She means nothing to me. So why should I act like something is wrong? I should just treat her as I would any acquaintance. So I called her just to say I'd been busy and wasn't avoiding her. That I, could, I couldn't care less about our date experience and that I was... And it was one partial night with somebody I barely know. It wasn't something I was going to stay hung up on like, and or likely remember eventually. So you're like, whatever. During the past week, she sent me a couple of how's it going questions, and then a longer one downright begging that we give it another shot. So in other words, initially her perception he was a nice guy that she can use to buy her some dinners and make her boyfriend jealous, and hopefully he'll take her back. Now all of a sudden she's realizing, wait a second here. By you standing up for yourself and putting her in her fucking place and making her realize you're not that nice guy, you're exhibiting behavior that bad boys do, even though you're not an a-hole, and she's finding that attractive. So if you, you definitely, you're in a position here, she's obviously chasing after you, that you could probably bang this chick and walk away if you wanted, if, and I'll come back to that in a moment. So here I am, SSM, telling my story. I'm conflicted because she is beautiful. Smack! Yeah, that's, that's been the downfall of man since the beginning of time. She's one chick. She's a piece of ass. So what? And technically, hasn't cheated on me or done too much wrong. It's not like we had a long-term relationship or anything. And I'm liking the fact that she knows who is the boss and that I won't budge in my standards. It even seems to have attracted her more to me. Well, I agree she knows you have standards and you won't back down. And I do agree that she is attracted. I do agree she's attracted to you. You showed her you're not who she thought you were. But still, she's behaved in ways that simply I would have no, I wouldn't deal with. I almost feel like maybe this is a good thing that happened. And then we can start off, we can start a relationship off with an understanding of who's the boss and what is expected. Smack! No, this girl's not relationship material. However, the other part of me is saying trust my instincts. If this was a preview of the type of disrespect to come, and I would regret getting into a relationship with a girl that flashed so many red flags on just the first date alone. What do you say, SSM? Thank you for listening. I would say you can do one of two things. Either just ghost the bitch, and that's the end of it, knowing that there's lots of red flags in the first date, and how she is going to treat you the second the second you show any type of weakness, or in her eyes weakness, how she's going to treat you. Not to mention the baggage of the former guy. And probably the type of guy she's used to going out with. You don't need that shit. On the other hand, I can tell you're really dying to see what will happen here. So I would say this. This girl is obviously chasing after you. In my opinion, based on what you're... If you're being truthful in your description of her behavior and are constantly bombarding you with texts and phone calls trying to get your attention and everything like that, you probably could literally say, Hey, on uh, Friday night, why don't you come over here after 7 o'clock? Here's my address. Bring over a pizza and some beer or sodas, whatever, and we'll hang out. And you could probably nail that broad probably within half an hour. And then you send her packing. Or the next morning or something. And you hooked up with her, got out of your system, end of story. If you want to get on that path, I don't think it'll be that hard because she likes you at this point. As long as you don't fuck it up by saying something stupid when she comes over. You could do that, but my concern is... Aside from something we can always be concerned about, she can make up a bunch of shit saying that you did something, but taking that out of the equation, my problem is, then you she comes over and you, you Netflix and chill with your pizza and you bang the broad, and next thing you know, you start liking her because she's beautiful, and she's 11 years younger than you, and that hey, that's a prize for a guy, and then slowly but surely, your old nice guy ways start coming out. That's my concern, and then next thing you know, you're disrespected and it's bullshit, and you get the point. And I don't know if you're there yet that you, because I'm telling you, 
you handle yourself well on the date, except for driving her home. But it's possible that your old nice guy ways will start coming out because you start feeling comfortable with her chasing after you and you know all that. And so maybe you have to go through this to learn. I don't know. But if it were me, knowing what I know, I would just cut her off and that's the end of that. But you got it's your life, you gotta do what you want to do. So make your decision and go with it. And uh, if you do have her come over, and I'm sure, again, if you play your cards right, you can nail her that night. Just make sure you provide your protection. Wear your protection, dispose your protection, and then get rid of her. And don't you dare get in a fucking relationship with her. So let me know what you decide down the road, whether you just cut her off completely, or you decide to have her home and tap that ass. But just, again, be careful. And I'm concerned you'll grow an attachment to her because he, because that's how who you used to be back in the day. But I guess at some point, you got to test to see if you really have changed. This situation or a future situation will determine that. But anyhow, guys, the point of this whole story is, from, aside from good entertainment, as there are girls out there that will be more than happy to use you, to use you for a date, just so they can get uh, a foodie date, a foodie call out of it, or she can make an ex jealous or something like that. And her perception that he was a nice guy that was going to let her pull that bullshit dinner you have to be prepared to walk. If a man stands up for himself and checks her when she's doing disrespectful shit, like you're sitting there trying to have a goddamn conversation and her phone keeps going off and she won't do anything about it, there you go, amongst many other things. And it's amazing the power when a guy actually acts different and doesn't take any shit. I've told you countless times the most powerful thing you can do is walk away. Whether it be if you're having an argument in the parking lot of Target or the grocery store, or you're out on a date and she's pissing you off, and it's gotten to the point that it's enough's enough, and you just walk and leave her ass there. Whatever that happens to be, or whatever, you, you get the point. It's amazing that power, because most guys will not do that. They're so scared of making her mad. Who the fuck cares? Make her mad. I've made lots of women mad, and it's amazing the power that has. All right, guys, that's it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let this guy know what you think. Let him know. I want to. I'm sure we're gonna get a whole range of answers here. Either ghost her completely and move on, invite her back to the house and bang the broad and send her packing, or explore his idea of maybe starting a relationship with this girl. I'm sure it'll probably be 50-50. I would say it's probably going to be 50% cut her off, 40%, 45% bang her and then toss her to the side of the road, and 5% go into a relationship with her. But we shall see the percentages in the comment section. I'll pay attention to that. And if you like the video, share it with your friends and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.